In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at all three of our major models, even the temperature anomalies and the total precipitation, total snowfall. We might even get into some of this freezing rain still expected. We're going to be using this kind of bland format here, kind of being brutally honest there, uh, for the next week or two. And then I have a new computer set to arrive by the 14th. That will be Valentine's Day, by the way. Uh, don't forget that. Um, just a reminder for some of you fellows out there. Um, I am going to be getting a new computer and that should basically be the end of all these issues with the videos and we can get a lot more, kind of, kind of get these videos back to how I want them to be. For now, I'm more worried about just getting the best information out there as possible, doing the best we can with what we have. We can see still as of this morning, I want to actually just take this further towards more when I'm making this video and we can see that there is freezing rain coming down here, especially across a lot of Texas here. Um, even up through the Dallas-Fort Worth area there, uh, we could see that far western Texas as well, seeing some of this freezing rain, and then it's kind of scattered about throughout southern Arkansas at this point. And this is the main thing going on at this point. It'll still be happening by tomorrow afternoon, so Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas here, uh, but much lighter, in fact, and really just not as much as we've been seeing. Still a quite a bit of storminess here across the southeast, and we're going to be watching very closely Friday morning for North Carolina to see some snowfall. Now, accumulation is definitely, definitely not expected. However, uh, that doesn't mean that there is not going to be uh, potentially some flakes flying. So we will be watching for that to be potentially occurring there. Uh, definitely something that I'm going to be keeping my eyes on, uh, and we will talk more about that. This Particularly, this European model does not show this. Uh, so we see all rainfall there as this cold air moves in. We see a very major trough digging into the eastern United States here. So we're watching this closely. Uh, we see, again, this precipitation underneath. And then really high and dry out west here as we have a high pressure system set up. Uh, and this is the look here as we approach the weekend. Very frigid air for the eastern United States, but really no snowfall is expected to uh, happen with that. We have kind of like an Arctic high uh, here somewhere. It's pretty broad, but there is some Arctic uh, high pressure here. And this is allowing uh, for quite a bit of this cold air to basically move around a lot of this high pressure and back down the east coast. So I expect the coldest air actually to be along the eastern seaboard here. By about this point on Saturday, looks to be very, very frigid. Um, and we just continue this on. We're much quieter. We get more cool downs. This one not quite as major, but we have more cold air in the eastern United States by the time we're reaching about the sixth here. There will be mild air at times in between, but again, more Arctic air. This case, again, we have some high pressure up here. And it appears like especially uh, on this eastern end of things, we are seeing... Uh, a lot of this activity so definitely definitely something to watch um, as we move closer uh, to this event I, I definitely want to see what ends up happening with this um, we can see that we do get a ridge here eventually more of a kind of trough in the central United States a bit of a southeast ridge here with lots of precipitation I've been talking about how we've mostly seen a lot of this precipitation come in the second the warmth comes in. So we see these things really acting together. We do have a bit of a positive PNA here, but the tilt of it um, really allows for this cold to dig back in towards the southwest and not really head eastward. And also the southeast ridge is playing a part in that as well. So it's a pretty complicated pattern. We do see, again, plenty of storminess across a lot of the southeast there, and even a low developing near the coast here. I am curious about this kind of end of the model run look here from the European model, because with this strong, strong nor'easter taking place here along the east, this first off, and, and we have this low here as well, uh, this should pull a lot of the cold air down uh, the coast here, which I honestly think could be conductive for some sort of snowfall event here in the eastern United States, especially with this Arctic air pairing nicely with this uh, nor'easter moving in. Definitely worth noting, a uh, very strong nor'easter 994 here, pretty close to the coast. Uh, definitely could be conductive for some snowfall. This is very far out, 240 hours. We're going to take this with a grain of salt, but we are watching this closely. Uh, this does seem to be a very high moisture nor'easter, which typically this would allow for a lot of this precipitation to get closer to this drier, colder air. Uh, so definitely something to watch closely, especially if this cold air moves in a little bit quicker or perhaps if the storm develops a little bit slower. Let's say the storm is a little bit behind and then it you know, makes its way up the coast. 
and we have cold air actually along the coast here, we could be getting some substantial snowfall from something like this. Definitely something to watch, but also uh, this is far out, so take it with a grain of salt at the same time as well. Uh, as we just take a look at the total precipitation, uh, we do see that, again, there is plenty of storminess heading in through the northwest. But also, we continue to see this storminess heading in through the southeast. We see some of this coming in at different points of interest here. Uh, but certainly, this is where a majority of the activity here in the United States will be, and also here in the northwest. So these are the two hot spots still over the next 10 days through the 11th of February there. Now, as we take a look at the total snowfall, anywhere in the grays will be a dusting, if anything. Blues 2 to 6 inches of snowfall. Purple 6 to 10 there. Pinks 10 to 20. Your pastel blue is going to be 20 to 38 inches of snowfall, and then your pastel pink's 38 inches plus. Certainly very, very interesting to track these things. I want to mention that this snowfall here that you're seeing is going to be happening over the next 24 hours. So that is happening very shortly. I mean, accumulation probably going to be uh, a factor here, possibly adjusting to potentially an inch or two. Uh, definitely and I have to watch and see for that. But outside of there in the lighter grays, we don't really expect too much accumulation uh, at all. Definitely uh, going to be taking a look at the GFS model here because there are some interesting things to note, especially as we just head towards um, kind of Friday morning. Again, this is where there's potential snowfall for the Carolinas as we see this precipitation and the cold air driving southward simultaneously. Um, and as we kind of get into the lower temperatures there of Friday morning, here, we, we are going to see something interesting happening here in North Carolina where we start to see this switch over some blue there. Uh, and that digs deep towards the Raleigh-Durham area, potentially further south as well there in North Carolina. Uh, very, very interesting look to me. And you can see that dives all the way down towards coastal Carolina at points uh, before we reach the high temperatures of the day. Uh, we do see very far south in South Carolina and North Carolina potential snowfall with this. I'm curious about this situation, and I'm going to be watching it closely. I was looking at the National Weather Service graphics. I can't really show that because I don't have it pulled up. But uh, they have kind of pointed out anywhere from about a 5 to 20% chance of seeing snowfall throughout Virginia and North Carolina from basically now through the 4th of February. So uh, they have acknowledged the chance. It's not necessarily the highest chance in the world, but there is some models on board here, particularly if you're curious the GFS model, and then the SREF model, that's S-R-E-F, I believe, and that's an ensemble short-range model, sort of. That's been a good model historically at times, and that one particularly has also pointed out the snowfall for North Carolina, and then the NAM model, but you want to take that one with a grain of salt with overly aggressive features um, is kind of my rule of thumb, and this particularly seems like a situation where the NAM could definitely go overboard um, as it shows quite a bit of snowfall. But you're welcome to check that out, obviously, uh, on your own. I think it's a very uh, interesting thing. Uh, we do see a nor'easter. Again, we've been talking about this actually for a while around the 6th developing here. Uh, it kind of just rises up out of nowhere uh, and then it wants to kind of move up the coast here, but there's not enough cold air really. If it did move closer to the coast, I could see something happening here along the northeast, but it wants to kind of uh, move with the jet stream, which is primarily uh, moving just straight offshore. Uh, but if somehow it could get pulled up the coast, I could see the, the argument for potentially some snowfall to some extent here for the northeast uh, or mid-Atlantic. But we're getting closer and closer, and the, the odds of things changing in a major way are going down with time. Now, we do see a low kind of rise up from the central United States here uh, as we kind of have a jet stream pattern like this. Um, and what we see happen is a cold front is sort of developing underneath and a, a bit of a warm front, I would say. And this does look conductive for some severe weather potentially across uh, portions of the deeper south and south central United States, kind of around the, the 8th, 9th, 10th time frame. And even as we see things developing uh, along this cold front underneath for the 11th here, kind of the 10th into the 11th, and even along the southeast coast there, uh, there midday on Saturday the 11th, I could see definitely uh, some potential uh, severe thunderstorms or even just thunderstorms happening here around this time frame. So definitely something to watch there. Um, we're going to be watching that very, very closely there. And then we follow this up with very extreme cold air again. So February, at least as of now, looks like it'll go back and forth. Whereas January wanted to be all warm. Uh, definitely. Yeah, crazy. I typically I have a weather station in my backyard. I go over the weather here in southeast Virginia. We got into the 20s as lows only about two times that I could measure from my weather station. 
uh, which is very, very odd. Uh, we got into the 70s as highs five times here in Southeast Virginia, only got as low as 20 two times. So tell me if that sounds like January to you or much more like April. Uh, I've been talking about how this month has been very spring-like, and we almost got five inches of rainfall here as well over the course of the month of January, which is just a ton of precipitation for January. It's just been so crazy. I think February at least looks to be a, a normal winter month, uh, perhaps a normal warmer winter month, but it's not going to feel like April, I don't believe. I think that we're going to see these back and forth cooldowns, as you can see, as there's already by the 13th, two major cooldowns, uh, according to this model. Um, and then, you know, we have these warm ups in between as we see this precipitation rising up, the cold air is more centered over the south, south central there. But still, we're seeing the warm up, the cool down, the warm up, the cool down. That's a little bit more typical than just seeing straight warm through the month and then maybe like one or two cold days. Uh, extremely unusual weather that we experienced there um, in January. Now, the Canadian model, I, would ju I just want to see what this does here. We do see some of this Friday no, we don't. We don't see any Friday morning snowfall actually with this one either. So this is one of the ones that's not on board with that snowfall. Other models being on board again. We see this extreme trough here that we have in the cent uh, east eastern United States. Sorry, there. And um, then we kind of have this higher pressure here across the central United States. Uh, and this is really just uh, allowing for all of this cold air to get sent down this way. Um, so that is why we're seeing that as part of the factor uh, of why we're seeing this cold air kind of moving into the eastern United States, uh, certainly part of it, I wouldn't say the main thing. Uh, now we do see again another miniature cooldown. As this nor'easter on the 6th here, we do see a little bit of mixed precipitation here along the mid-Atlantic. I just talked about how this has some potential. We do see some ice there in the Carolinas to start things out, but then it moves very quickly offshore, so it can't really connect for anything further north than that. Although, again, there's plenty of cold air, as we can see some blue across these regions, uh, so there is still some potential there. Uh, we do get that southeast ridge kind of at play again, uh, and then we get another mini cooldown. Then we get an even bigger uh, ridge here, southeast ridge, <clears throat> as we have this storm developing here. Cold front underneath, like I mentioned before, warm front here. Very, very classic to see severe weather underneath for the southeast here again. Uh, and then we are going to see probably a very big cold air mass after this point around probably the 11th through the 15th, perhaps, as this cold front fully moves out, which it has not done yet. So after this moves well offshore, we should see a trough centered over here, a ridge centered over here, uh, which should give us something like this, obviously, uh, eventually. That looks to be the look after this point. Now, let's see what the European and solid model has to say. We see this very cold air on the way. Here's Arctic blast number one, again, where I think the more eastern areas here are, are where the cold is centered, although there is plenty of unseasonably cold temperatures across most of the east here. As we continue things on, we get a warm up here and then a brief cool down along the eastern seaboard there around the 6th, 7th time frame, right when that low could potentially be offshore. Uh, so that's what I've been talking about. We see a warm up after that. Uh, and then this model is an ensemble model, but we don't see any backing away from that. Uh, warmer look at all we get pure uh, trough in the west ridge in the east here on this european ensemble model however this model is an ensemble model and in the long range we do see things get kind of averaged out uh, and this model does have a little bit of a warm bias here although we are seeing plenty of cold out west i am curious to see what ends up happening here but this model seems to not be too optimistic about any cold entering into the east after this week which at this point i wouldn't rule that out but uh, it doesn't seem you know, what are the odds of two months like we just had occurring? Uh, very crazy stuff, regardless. We will be going over every single day, just like always. So be sure to subscribe so you never miss an upload as we will go over all of these things uh, and be the first here to basically go over it. Uh, also, you can click the bell icon for daily notifications when we do upload so you never miss one. Also, be sure to like the video, leave a comment down below, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.